fractions with negative fractions. Some fractions will start out as subtraction problems and we're going to write them right back into addition problems. So we're always doing the same thing, adding fractions. Now if you think back, to add means to count things that are the same. Now you're going to find out why we talk about counting things that are the same when it comes to adding fractions. Because the only way you can add a fraction is if it's the same kind of fraction, which means to get the denominator or the bottom number to be the same. That's why we worked on least common multiples in the last session. So what we're going to do is get right to work on this so you can see that adding fractions is still counting the same kind of numbers, in this case fractions. So let's get to work right away and we'll be using the concept of the least common multiple to show you how to add fractions. So let's start with this one fourth plus one sixth. So what I'm going to do is the first step is this, is I'm going to focus on the denominator so that I can get them to be the same kind of fractions. And my denominator is 4 is 2 times 2, I'm writing prime factors, plus I have 6, which is going to be 2 times 3. Now if you notice, that's all I've done so far, is just make the denominators into prime factors. The next step is to use the least common multiple to get the denominators to be the same. You may have heard this called the lowest common denominator, but it's really just using the least common multiple. So look and see. The, and here's how we're going to do this with adding fractions. If you notice, we've got two twos in this first fraction and a two and a three in the second fraction. Well, to get them to be the same, now think about the least common multiple, two twos and one three. Well, let's make them the same. How do we get them the same? Well, to get them the same, what does this fraction going to need from this fraction to make them look like? Well, it's going to need a 3. Now it's going to be two twos and a 3. This fraction is going to need a, another 2. So now they're the same, two twos and a 3, two twos and a 3. But one thing about fractions is this, is whatever you do to the bottom number, you've got to do the same thing to the top number. So if I times by 3 on the bottom, I'm going to times by 3 on the top. If I times by 2 on the bottom on this fraction, I have to times by 2 on the top. Well, that's going to give me two new fractions, and here's my two new fractions. 1 times 3 is 3, and down below my new denominator is going to be this, 2 times 2 times 3, which is 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. Plus, I have 1 times 2, which is 2, and on the bottom I have 2 times 3 times 2, which again is 12. Now, if you notice, we have gone in and we have now created common denominators. Now the fractions are the same, so I can actually add them together. 3 plus 2 equals 5, and what do I have? Well, I have 5 twelfths. Now, notice that the denominator doesn't change to, I don't add 12 plus 12, because I'm not actually adding the twelfths. I'm adding what kind of twelfths I had. I have three twelfths and two twelfths, which gives me five twelfths. And I have now added those fractions. So one fourth plus one sixth, as I create the common denominator, so we're using the least common multiple to do so, I come up with five over twelve as my answer to adding those two fractions. All right, well, let's take a look at what happens if it's negative. You know, the exact same thing. So let's look and see. Well, what happens if it's negative? Well, I'm going to start off using my factors just like I did. 1 over 2 times 2 plus negative 1 over 2 times 3. Well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to look and see what do they need. This one has two twos. This one has a 2 and a 3, just like we did over here. This one needs a 3. This one needs a 2. If I do a 3 on the bottom, I do a 3 on the top. If I do a 2 on the bottom, I do a 2 on the top. What I'm going to have now is this. I'm going to have... I'm going to have 1 times 3, which is going to be 3, just like it was before. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12, plus I have negative 1 times 2, which is 2, and I have 2 times 3 times 2, which is going to be 12. Well, look what I have. I have 3 plus negative 2 twelfths. 3 twelfths plus negative 2 twelfths, and if I add 3 plus negative 2, a positive plus a negative, you subtract, 
give it the sign of the larger absolute value, in this case 3 times 2 is 1, 3 is bigger absolute value, so the answer is going to be 1, and I have what I was counting by, which was 12. So remember, we addition means to count things that are the same. And in this case, we're counting fractions. Count things that are the same, but well, we are counting fractions, and what makes them the same is the denominators must be the same. So what we do to get these kinds of fractions to be the same is when the denominators are the same. That's what allows us to count them. So we want to get the denominators to be the same. That's the game when we're adding fractions, whether we're adding positive fractions or negative fractions. So now we're going to take a look at several examples so that when you're doing the coursework, you can always refer back to this part of the DVD to look and see how to do this. So let's take a look at some more. session we're going to look at adding fractions when the denominators are variables and how do you do that well you do that exactly the same way we've been doing it with numbers by looking at the factors of the variables very simple let's take a look at this first one 1 over x plus 1 over y watch what's going to happen if I look at the factors of x well the factors of x are x that's it the factors of y are y that's it so if I say okay well then the x is going to need a y, and the y is going to need an x. Watch this. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by the x needs a y, and the y needs an x, and whatever I do to the bottom, I'm going to do to the top. So I've now created this new, these new fractions that look like this, 1 times y, which is y, over x times y, which is xy. 1 times x, which is x, over y times x, which is also xy, even though it says y times x, we write that x, y, we're going to write it in alphabetical order. Now look at this. I have a common denominator, and I have unlike terms. So what happens when you have a common denominator with unlike terms? Well, you just write it as one fraction. The denominator is going to be x, y, because it's a common denominator. What kind of fraction do we have? Well, we have x, y. y over x, y plus x over x, y. And what is y plus x? Well, it is exactly what it says, y plus x. Now, guess what? This is done. The only other thing I could do with this if I wanted to was because I want to write it alphabetical, I'll write x plus y over xy, and that is it. There's nothing else to do with that problem. It's kind of fun when you see them this way because that really is all there is to do. Let, let's take a look at another one. This time, let's put some numbers in other than 1, give it some negatives, let's look and see what's going to happen. So let's start here with negative 7 over x squared plus 5 over x. Now, this time we're going to have to look at the factors and see what we get. Well, let's look and see. We're going to have this. We're going to have negative 7 over x times x plus we're going to have 5 over x. Well, now, if I look at the factors of x squared, which is x times x, here I have an x times an x. If two x's over here, I only have one. So this one is going to need a, another x. So I'm going to multiply by x, and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Well, look what I have now. I have this. I have negative 7 over x squared plus 5x over x squared. I have common denominators, again, with unlike terms. So what I'm going to be left with is this. I'm going to have the denominator of x squared, and I'm going to have negative 7 plus 5x. And that's it. There's nothing else to do with that. That is actually complete. <laughs>